Welcome back, survivors. I'm the survival of this, and we return to Mandibles. So, last episode was a nice little intro into what Mandibles is as a game, I think. Everything was pretty well. And this time, I did go into the options and put sensitivity up and view range up. And I'm going to check and see, because the sensitivity seemed rather okay when the view range was down at half. So I want to see if maybe there's something changed in the programming with that. I don't know for certain, but let's hop into Hunt, shall we? So, last time we got our first Macrocana, and we used the double barrel, the Cersei double barrel. I think we're going to try for the elephant rifle this time. We'll take the double, oh, no, actually, maybe not the double ammo. And I just got to change my sensitivity down again. See, we'll do that, that, and go for these three again. And see if we can find anything in the Gates of Dawn, and again, we will do Dawn, just to see how this kind of goes. I don't know where this area was, though. They kind of felt like the gateway between. Maybe it was just that spot we'd seen on the map, but I'm not sure. Either way, this time we're going to try to find a Yopratura or a Holos... or Holkorobius. Holkorobus. God, I really gotta figure out the names and pronunciation for some of the stuff. Like, you have to be a Latin expert in order to be able to say anything in paleontology accurately, really. But let's hop into Hunt and get started. Okay, so we're loaded in here again, and I think we are, yeah, basically dumped us right where it did last time. So if we want to get down, ooh, actually a lot more of the, just have a rifle at the ready for anything. Not that I think we'll really get startled by anything too quickly or easily. We've gotten a few more Hylonomus around us. We didn't really actually see any of those last time. That might be... Ooh, there we go. Now there's something new. Yeah, yeah so that's a whole... whole Corobus. That'd be nice to be able to get one of those right off the bat. Yeah, it's just kind of slowly making its way down. Yeah, I think it should... I say should, but it may be stuck in that little area there. So we're not going to move. We're going to try to call it down into maybe the 200 meter. Just want to be careful, because... it. I don't... I think they were eyesight as one of their... Ah, crap. Well, this kind of sucks. As much as the terrain is better in some spots, we also will be fighting it in others. So unfortunately, I don't know if we'll be able to get up this to actually... Yeah, see, like, this is... Okay, well, a little hop will at least do that good. Okay, so we're not going to move. No, it seems to be in a good idle animation, so we may be able to get it closer from behind. Ooh. Seems like I'm aiming a little high on him, perhaps. And I think we're too... F God, I... I still feel like the spread was something you didn't need to include in the game. No matter, it probably came with the base carnivores engines, but I still feel like the spread was something you didn't really need to include. We did at least get one shot off on it, though. Like, we've got the blood trail here. Although it's probably going to be hard climbing this... Yeah, I'm basically going to... I guess you can kind of climb anything as long as you hold the space bar and turn sprint mode on, so... At least we were able to get up here. And we'll be careful as we try to find it again. Looks like the blood trail, though, is pretty easy to follow. At least I thought it would be, but it looks like... Went down this way. I 
Yeah, we at least got the blood trail we can follow, which is helpful. So let's see if we can get our first one of these giant beetles, but... I really do miss more modern games with this... A better iron sight and scope, and just... You feel like you're fighting the systems much less than you do in the previous games like this. Like, it has the weird mix of wanting to have, like, shooter aspect stuff where you have the pistol and shotguns of some of your starter ones. I mean, this... I mean, I guess depending on the range, it's pretty accurate, but it's... Another one I feel, too, is, like, the game feels misleading for how far distance really can be. Like, some things that say it's 100 meters away really don't look 100 meters away. But we'll continue along here. Foot trail is still going pretty good, so... It might just be over another little bend or mountain like this. And sensitivity, I don't think, was actually too bad off with it at default, so... We may keep that as we keep going with the series. We'll have to see as I go along and what we kind of run into some other stuff with. Well, there it is. And I do have to say another thing I do miss from... I know it's probably going to sound like a lot of just going back into comparing this to more modern things, but also a proper cover system like bushes and shrubs, and they actually do disguise you a bit, and you can kind of just stay behind them and call stuff in. Okay, I don't think we'll get lucky with this game for features and stuff like that. Okay, with it down there, though, we might be able to sneak up a little better, sort of like we did with the Macrocana the first episode. As long as you have the terrain blocking you, I don't think they're as... They're able to pick you up quite as easily. And I have to say, if that's one of your excuses for being able to sneak up on Animal is just having the line of sight blocked, I don't think that's really good design, but... There we go, yeah, we're getting into nice range now. There we go. Yeah, and there's what we saw, the Bernicia. Basically, it looks like a giant snail. We've gotten our first Holocorobius, and we still do have a few shots. We'll probably stick around and keep hunting if we can, see if we can find anything else. We've got another successful hunt. I just didn't quite sprint down here to see them, but... Yeah, these ones, it feels like the textures work a lot better with some of the models, like... Oh, a couple of you little guys running off. And you running too. That's a little odd. I don't think we can hunt this. I think this is just another ambient animal. It's sort of around in the area. Yeah, all the detail on the animations and the textures of the models are very superb. Triassic, uh, there were some creatures like, say, the Lotosaurus and, well, even the Megalosaurus a little bit. felt like the textures were stretched a little bit onto the models. But Triassic so far, the textures feel like they fit a little more with how the models are more unique compared to the others. But we've gotten one successful animal. Let's see if we can get another. It only took us uh, about less than 10 minutes for our first one, so that's not as bad as... I think Triassic was. I've improved a little bit. I won't say I've improved a lot, but I still feel like I'm getting little hints and tips under my belt from our experience playing. So next time, well, I think we'll have to get the points up, but I would like to try and see what the other one is. The elephant rifle, I think it is, or is this, no, this is a double, I can't remember which one was the elephant rifle, either the next one up, up from this weapon or the other one, and I do have the pistol too, but never been a handgun hunter fan. Uh, I do like the idea of it as a sidearm, like you pull it out when something's charging after, say, you're trying to reload or your main weapon's kind of going to take too long, but actual hunting with a handgun never felt right or proper in a way to me. 
but we'll continue our way along. It is sort of backtracking from last episode over the same terrain, but... Maybe next time we'll spend a little more time up in the desert area. I don't know if there would actually be... Well, we actually did ha That is where we found the first one that we took down, so there is game up there. You'll just have to be patient to go through and find it and look around there. And we'll just get up here. Maybe have something at the ready. Probably stick with this. The stopping power is very nice to have. But just in case we surprise anything. Because the first episode, we actually did catch a glimpse of the Arthropleura and sent that kind of sprint. Actually, I can't really say sprinting off because I don't know if they actually run, but I guess skittered off? Terminology of her insects is a little weird to try to change. Like, dinosaurs, you can say sprinted, yeah, no problem, but... Do, do insects actually sprint off or do they skitter or claw or... It's just kind of weird to think about, isn't it? I think that's probably what most of my series are going to be, is random weird bits of nonsense that maybe you never think of until this person has... Ooh, there we go, there's another one. So you know what, we are going to try walking closer. The wind isn't against us, and I think they are more of an eyesight hunt... Or an eyesight wary one. So what we'll do is we'll use... And I think we do have to use the terrain much more than I was in the previous mods and games. So we'll stick down here. And as we come up now, we'll crouch and have the rifle ready and see how close we are to it. Oh, it's gone up there now. Okay, yeah, it did see us because we are basically right in front of it, so we did send it running. Unfortunately, the wind is... A bit against us, too. And I think that time was definitely because we were moving just as it was... I can't really say looking at us, but facing towards our direction would probably be the best way of saying it. I don't know how well the AI is programmed for picking stuff up and... Like, what is detection radii or cones are? I don't know if it actually is, like, a cone in front of it that it'll kind of look for any movement if there is or it'll pick you up or that's really the finer points I think of programming that you don't really think about until somebody really does bring it up just like how my rants are okay so it's over there now and wind is kind of against us but not as bad I suppose I don't even know if crouching actually really does anything for avoiding detection as we're moving up to it or not but We'll see if we can sneak our way closer. Yeah, still a ways out. I wonder... Okay, we're not going to move because it is turning. Oh. I don't know. I'm not going to take the shot. I thought about it, but maybe... If we give it enough space and we let the wind sort of work with us, maybe we'll be able to get there a bit better. But that's kind of the stuff I'm talking about where... I guess if the spread wasn't so bad, I could see it being maybe a little too easy for a game. Like, if there was no spread, I could probably easily take it down with a couple of shots right here, but... Yeah, you want to try to plan and save your shots because if you do shoot... You're going to send it going off a lot further than it already was. Now I'm going to try. This is probably going to backfire, but... I want to stay with the tree here and just see what happens. I don't think we'll actually pick up on the binoculars. Oh, no, we will, and it does see us. Crap. Okay, well, maybe this will actually work for us. It depends on how far it runs, but if it kind of stays just on the other side of this hill, we'll have the terrain helping us try taking it on. 
and I really do have to give props to modders for what they've been able to bring into a game like Carnivores and the series for what it was. It's a shame the Carnivores didn't keep going and take off as it had. Yeah, this is... I feel like that's a little too sensitive to be at right now. I may... I'll probably try tweaking the settings a little bit, but I feel like that... Maybe it should have picked us up at the 200 meters mark, not the 300 like it was at, or the, if I'm more specific, 281 meters, I think, was the point where it kind of picked us up and then started going off. But stuff like that, it's hard to say exactly how far should be the right range for them to see you at. I know they're supposed to, I think their eyesight is supposed to be pretty good. Oh, well, hello. There we go, one pop off with the pistol to finish it off. So this time we're going to run up to it. Let's get a good look at it before the trophy ship comes. There we go. So aside from my aiming being terrible, another successful hunt. This is 159 meters away, so actually not too far off even with it trying to run away on us. I think that's another pretty successful episode, and though it might be a little bit on the shorter side, I think we'll end it here on this high note. Just to let it take our Rhino Beetle away in the nice little point tally. And I think we'll end it with another kind of vista of sorts. With, there we go, nice little proper way to give an end. But I want to thank you all very much for joining me in another episode of Mandibles. I think I do have a pretty good future ahead with the series. I think it will be at least 10 episodes, showcase all the weapons, all the animals. And one thing is, I don't know if I'll feel as big of a burnout on this one, just because the animals feel a little easier to hunt in a way. Because they're more low to the ground, they're easier to aim at, and maybe that'll also make up for the weapon spread on this one. We'll have to see. It is still pretty early, but already I am still enjoying myself quite a bit in Mandibles. Until I see you all in the next episode of that. Until I see you all in the next episode of Survivors, I swear I am getting better at recording. My, my tongue wants to move a little faster than my lips it seems there's a little bit of discontinuity between what i want to say and what i'm thinking so until next episode survivors please remember as always to take care and stay alive